two, one, two, a one, two. It's the Casey McGill Cocktail Hour. Coming to you live from the fabled Ridgewood Room, high atop the hills of Tacoma, the Casey McGill Cocktail Hour, a collection of music, news, and personality. Enjoy our special musical guests, fabulous dancers, celebrity bartenders, and our quiz Tacoma Squares with incredible prizes. So sit back, relax, mix up a little libation, and join us for a cocktail, culture, and camaraderie. Are we on now? Mm -hmm. Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, we had a little bumpy start there, but uh, we're up and running now uh, with a cocktail hour, and I want to uh, welcome everyone to the show out there in uh, internet land. And uh, also, we've got a great uh, collection of guests with us this evening, and um, I'm looking forward to getting to hear uh, our great musical guest uh, Mr. Ben Hunter perform and um, I want to say hello to everybody. Uh, do we have, okay we've got the, the screen now. Uh, up at the top of our screen we've got Vicki from uh, Halfway Oregon. Hi Vicki. Hi. Good to see you. Thank you for joining us today and um, do me a favor please don't give Jessica any more brownies oh, okay. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and right in the center of our screen, we've got our great musical guest, Mr. Ben Hunter. Hi, Ben. How you, you doing? made it. I made it. I'm, I'm here. I'm glad we're I'm glad we're on the other side of that little technical kerfuffle. And uh, I'm gonna look forward to uh, hearing you uh, make some music in just a couple minutes. Um, and uh, we have a, a fabulous uh, celebrity uh, bartender and uh, uh, general bon vivant man about town, uh, Mr. Jesse Noonan. Hi, Jesse. I'm looking over at the other monitor. Yeah, thank you for joining us, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, uh, enjoying your uh, chemical process as you bring a libation <laughs> forth. And um, let's see, who else do we have here? We've got the fabulous uh, Travis and Taylor, who are going to be demonstrating their, their dancing talents a little bit later on. Hi, kids. Yeah. And uh, they have a couple of uh, feline co-conspirators in the room as well. And, uh, and then, sitting in his palatial chair <laughs> in, in the, his den of iniquity, we have our good friend, Mr. Walter Harley. Hi, Walter. Howdy. You know, I want to say, Casey, that uh, technology always has its hiccups. As I'm sure you know, back in the 1600s, when they invented pianos, they would freeze up and echo and go in endless okay. loops all the time. So this well, is just the latest. That's about my experience today, actually. <laughs> I think that has more to do with me, though, than the piano. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you, you know, you're absolutely right. Um, I think technology is vastly overrated, you know. But um, I'm just one reporter here. In a few and, hundred years, uh, we'll have this breakdown from, smooth. From Vancouver Island, our, our great uh, uh, pal and musical talent, uh, the lovely uh, Jen Hodge. Hi, Jen. Hello, Jen. Hello. Thank and, you. And uh, you saw Jen playing the string bass um, on the, uh, yeah. the introduction, and uh, that was great. I really, I really enjoy that that intro. And um, so, um, we maybe we can uh, twist your arm and, and get you to do something a little bit later on in the show, Jen. Um, but anyway, right now, um, I would like to um, call your attention to uh, Ben who is our musical guest um, this, uh, in this episode. And uh, Ben is um, many things. He's, uh, he sings, he plays about four different musical instruments, and he's a historian and an educator and a uh, community supporter as well. He's been involved in a number of nonprofit endeavors, or is involved, and, um, and so, uh, and he, he's a, a real uh, great uh, resource of knowledge uh, when it comes to uh, pre-World War II music, uh, all kinds of music, blues and roots music. And uh, I watched a, um, 
uh, an episode of uh, his uh, history, History of Jazz Part One, and really enjoyed that because it starts during the slavery days and goes up, up into the beginning of the 20th century. And um, I really enjoyed hearing about how, how all the musical elements came together uh, for the music. So anyway, Ben, um, uh, it's great to have you on board. And um, I'm really curious. Uh, I know that you've been playing the violin. I read your bio. And, and <laughs> I, At least I somebody you've did. been playing the violin since you were a wee lad of five. And that you also have done a lot of traveling around the world. And so um, for better and worse, you've become very eclectic and, and you become kind of a crossroads of different musical styles. And uh, I really appreciate that. And, and I think that that's really where our creati creativity comes from is when uh, different elements come together and start to meld together. And uh, that's kind of what happened with jazz. And um, I just, just wondered if you could tell me uh, when you first uh, became aware of like vintage blues and uh, American roots music and and uh, did you have like an epiphany moment or did did you have a moment where you just felt like oh I love this this is I want to do this um yeah I've, I've uh, yeah I, I have epiphanies and I don't even know it um, <laughs> and, uh, but uh yeah, I mean, like you said, I I, I was I, I started playing classical violin when I was when I was a little kid, and um, and I think I think my mom, uh, you know, if she's watching this, uh, or if she's not, uh, I'll tr I'll keep it kind. Um, she, she, uh, I, I you know I think I, she really wanted me to be a classical violinist. I mean, she loves classical music as do I. Um, but you know, one of the things that uh, makes uh, being a classical musician hard is, is that you kind of have to just be a classical musician. Um, it requires yeah. that kind of like dedication. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. and, and I, I grew up listening to a lot of different music and, you know, whether it was like, I mean, I remember listening to like, we go on a lot of road trips. So I would listen to like the things that shine out to me are like Kathleen Battle and Wynton Marsalis did, had a CD in the nineties that like my mom and I listened to all the time. Um, um, we listened to this incredible, um, Iranian and Argentinian guitar duo called Strunz and Farah, uh, that are just fantastic. Um, we listened to, um, you know, a, a lot of folk, um, a lot of like Paul Simon, um, uh, a lot of Beatles, a lot of Bob Marley. Uh, and it wasn't, I think I, until I, uh, I, th I think I first like started to hear blues music on, on, on like PBS or, you know, that was like the only TV station that my mom really watches. Uh, and so I would watch it. And, um, you know, it, it was during, you know, Ken Burns jazz series or like uh, in the early nineties, there was a, there was a series called Eyes on the Prize um, that watched. And, and, um, and I think it was then when I first started to like hear those sounds. Um, but it wasn't really until I got to college that I actually started uh, doing anything with it and exploring it. Um, uh -huh. And then when I got out of got out of school and uh, moved to Seattle um, and started going to like the Acoustic Blues Festival, or um, you know, I was never big on technology. It's totally overrated. I, I didn't yeah. get into the Napster thing, but yeah. when I did finally discover how you know YouTube or like Pandora or things like that started to work. Um, uh, they started to open up a lot of doors for me. But, you know, it was probably in my early 20s that I started to listen to uh, blues music in, in, in earnest. Yeah, that's great. Well, um, I'm real anxious to hear uh, what you've got for us today. You want to play, <laughs> sure. play one of your favorites right now? Sure, 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 sure. Uh, I guess since we're talking about blues, I'll play a blues. Um, okay. Uh, I, I just started getting into the guitar in the last maybe like three years or so. Um, so forgive me if I'm not, you know, Craig Ventresco or Albany Folletta or anything like that, because um, I'm not. But uh, this is more of a singing song anyways. Um, this is a song by the great Leroy Carr and uh, 
piano player, um, you know, would play with like Scrapper Blackwell, uh, Chicago style uh, player, and just had a lovely voice um, and, and just sang some real, real, real beautiful tunes. Um, and this is probably one of his more, more famous tunes. It's called uh, In the Evening. In the evening, baby, when the sun goes down, in the evening, when the sun goes down. When your lover's not around, when the sun goes down. Last night I lay sleeping, and I was thinking to myself, I said last night I lay sleeping. And I was thinking to myself Well I'm wondering and thinking why the one you love Would mistreat you for someone else When the sun goes down played piano he didn't live to be too old but he made a lot of great recordings he had a wonderful voice like Ben was saying and uh, I think that he was a big influence on another uh, blues musician who came right after him Robert Johnson oh yeah and uh, you listen to Robert Johnson singing and you can hear 
some definite echoes of Leroy Carr. And uh, yeah, he, he, I love those records of his. And every once in a while, I'll go on eBay and see what they're going for, but I haven't got any yet. <laughs> well, you know, another big influence of Robert Johnson was, uh, was Lonnie Johnson. Uh, oh, yeah. Was a big influence of him. I'm not going to even attempt to play anything of him, but uh, yeah. yeah, another, another yeah. amazing voice. Yeah, and and uh, what a wonderful guitar player, the best. Lonnie Lonnie Johnson uh, was from New Orleans, and uh, he actually lived to be uh, fairly old. And um, he uh, did some recording sessions with a whole bunch of different people. Um, he he uh, made some sides with the Duke Ellington Orchestra, which are fantastic, and he did some duets with a. Uh, an early jazz guitar player named Eddie Lang, and uh, they had a great time playing together. Eddie Lang, you would say how much he enjoyed playing with Lonnie, and um, and then later on, uh, Lonnie Johnson made uh, a bunch of records of himself singing. It, his early records, I don't know. Did do you know that he did any singing at the beginning of his career? I think he was. Yeah. Yeah, he did. He did some singing at the beginning of his, in his early in his, some of his early sets. Um, but you know, his first his first instrument was the violin. Oh, and, I didn't uh, know that. Yeah, and in fact, uh, one of the first recordings that he did was on the violin. Um, oh. One of his first sides it was a it was a violin song on one side and a guitar song on the other song. He oh. he would play oh, with. I didn't his, know that. With his yeah, he played with his brother. His brother played cello and piano, and he wow. played violin and guitar, and they and they busk on the streets in New Orleans together. Wow. That's yeah. fantastic. Well, see, I learned something. That's fantastic. Um, <laughs> That'll be know, the only thing. <laughs> you know, you know what? Um, and you actually, you actually created a fantastic segue opportunity, because uh, we would love to hear you play some of your fiddle or your violin, whichever you'd like to call it. And you got uh, it. Yeah, you, and, uh, I really enjoy uh, Ben's fiddle playing and. Uh, I think I've seen you do that uh, solo before. Yeah, I do it solo. Uh, any any particular style you'd like to hear? Um, whatever uh, mood you're in is, is going to be fine with us. Well, um, in an attempt to uh, to keep it in the same um, uh, era, mm -hmm. uh, and if we're and if we're going to like in, in, enlighten people to different different stuff. Um, I'm gonna play a song uh, that wasn't written by this by this man, but he. Uh, I should turn my little echo thing off. It wasn't written by this man, but um, was a, a beautiful version was played by him. A guy by the name of Eddie South. Oh yeah. And uh, he was um, a, a prodigy violinist virtuoso that uh, was coming out of Chicago. I don't think he was born in Chicago. I think he might have been born in Arkansas. But he, uh, similar story to, you know, folks like Nina Simone that aspired to be classical musicians and, um, and weren't able to realize their dreams because the society and the era that they lived in uh, did not allow for black folks to be classical musicians. It just wasn't, it wasn't going to happen. Even though uh, if you were to listen to any of Eddie South's recordings, you would understand that his talent was was beyond measure and it's ar it's arguable he you know one of his contemporaries was Joe Venuti and uh, I, I argue that he's better than Joe Venuti and um, and and some of the people that I that I respect and admire as violinists would argue the same thing um, yeah the, the fact that he didn't have a classical career it had nothing to do with his ability it wasn't for lack of ability for sure no no it wasn't and and so you know he he ended up um, after after conservatory shipping off to um to hungary and 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 learning you know music of of that ilk out there and then met up with uh joe uh with django and stefan and cut some some uh albums with them and and uh, came back and had a really successful uh radio show out of la um oh i didn't know that where he demonstrated some of his classical songs because you know he had he had the airwaves uh, but yeah. his his most popular song, which I'm still learning right now, which he was it was kind of his theme song, was a, a Hungarian tune called Hajer Kati, um, yeah. and uh, and it's just phenomenal. Anyway, so I'm gonna play a song called Kiss Me Again, Waltz. All right. God. 
We'll just yeah. put that there. There you go. Or something. shortened version of a, of a really beautiful waltz that I really love. Um, and if you have the opportunity to check out uh, Eddie South, um, he's not as hard to find as he used to be, so find him. <laughs> and listen to him. That's all I got. He's amazing. I love Eddie South. Yeah. Yeah, he's so good. He's so good. That whole band was good, too. And what I love about the band is it was called the it was called uh, the International Orchestra. And, wow. you know, they sang songs in Spanish and French and all kinds yeah. of stuff. And they were just they were just phenomenal. Yeah, I want to call everybody's attention to um, our uh, receptacle of gratitude here. Uh, there's a, um, a, t a virtual tip jar for Ben at uh, Venmo. And the link is right at the bottom of the screen. So if you're enjoying what you're hearing, Please uh, step up and uh, express your gratitude in a um, in a tangible form, ladies and gentlemen. We appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, as tangible as possible. Yeah, as tangible <laughs> as possible. And uh, Ben, uh, I really really enjoyed that a lot, and I want to uh, you know hear some more of your music. I've got to move on here and uh, cover some more of our bases on our big long list of of exciting uh, features in this show. But, I'll uh, get to the cocktail. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give him a round of applause. Uh, ben Hunter. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. And, uh, I, I programmed this song because I'm, I'm going to do a tune for you right now, an original. And uh, this is uh, kind of a bluesy uh, flavor, but it's not actually a blues. Um, and this, this tune... Um, I took the title from an old uh, pop tune from the late 1920s, and uh, uh, when I saw it on a list of old sheet music, I thought, oh boy, I bet this is a good tune, and it's called Love Ain't Nothing But The Blues, and um, so I, I sent away, I got the music, and then when I was playing it, I thought, oh, this is unfortunately not that great, and I thought, I, I think I can write maybe a little better song with that title. And so I sat down, and, and this is what came out. It's called Love Ain't Nothing But the Blues. And I want you to stick around, too, because um, after, after this, we've got, uh, uh, let's see. Um, 
After this, we're going we're gonna to all have pause for some uh, liquid refreshment and get to meet our fantastic celebrity bartender, Mr. Jesse Noonan, who's going to mix something up for us. And uh, we also have uh, our friends uh, Travis and Taylor, who are uh, sequestered in their lovely home with their kitties in Bavo. And they're going to be doing some dancing for us in just a few minutes. So, you know, stick around. We've got a lot of great stuff coming up. Anyway, right now, here's a little bit of Love Ain't Nothing But The Blues. And uh, pardon me if, if I'm looking down, I have to look at my hands when I play the piano, okay? Here we go. because after that, I need a drink. <laughs> and uh, we're going to move on, and um, we're going to uh, introduce you to uh, this episode's celebrity bartender. And he's sitting there with his accoutrements at the ready, ladies and gentlemen. Here's our good friend, Mr. Jesse Noonan. Hi, Jesse. Hello, Casey. Great to be with you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, it's an honor. I, uh, <laughs> celebrity is, uh, is a strong word. Um, <laughs> I'm an enthusiastic amateur. So uh, what I have for you this evening are a few uh, libations. Let's start out with the Kier. This is an aperitif that is very popular in France. And I think it, uh, it really should gain a bit more popularity uh, in our neck of the woods. And what a Kier is, 
is a dry white wine. Um, actually, it is creme de cassis. Um, I have this mason jar because it was easier to transport back from France. But this is a this is a black currant liquor from uh, from France. Uh, a tablespoon. Just put it in the uh, in the wine glass here. Put some dry white wine in here, and voila, you have a refreshing aperitif that can lift um, a basic dry wine. It's traditionally used with aligoté from Burgundy. It's uh, Kira was named after a, a mayor in, uh, in Burgundy. Burgundy is usually known for Chardonnay, but uh, this is a fabulous, fabulous drink to start with. Or you can get extra credit and do what's called a Cure Royale. And a Cure Royale is often used with champagne, but I like to use it with Cremant de Limoux, or a just a, a, a dry sparkling wine, and um, and the other thing, it's you know, flutes have become out of fashion with um, with uh, sparkling wine, um, but uh, I think it works perfectly with a uh, a, a Kier Royale, uh, and so I'm going to do the the um, uh, the tablespoon of creme de cassis here. And then, um, and then add that. And then, what's often what I like to do um, for extra credit here is to put a little bit of a lemon rind uh, in in the. Um, know, this is this lemon is not really really cooperating, but you get the you get the uh, the idea. You put a lemon rind in there, and that is a fabulous fabulous aperitif. Um, so for the cocktail. I am going to do what's called a reverse Manhattan. The Manhattan, of course, is is whiskey, bourbon, rye, etc., with a bit of sweet vermouth. I am using this fabulous uh, sweet vermouth um, from Solera Bravo Wines of Seattle. I highly encourage you, of course, to uh, support your local producers. This is, and so we're just going to make it very, very basic here, and uh, put some ice. Fill it mostly with this delicious vermouth. You do, it does require a bit of a sweet uh, palate. Not everybody likes a sweet palate, um, but we're gonna temper that sweetness. And then I'm gonna use this, this fabulous uh, Woodford Reserve, or you can use any kind of your favorite whiskey. Mm -hmm. And so instead of a two thirds whiskey and one third vermouth, we're gonna reverse that. And uh, so why would you do that? Well, less alcohol. You know, you're, you know, you can take it a little bit later into the evening. And then another twist here is we're going to, we're going to balance that with some lime acidity. That looks uh, lovely. A very simple drink to make. I'm sorry, Casey. I, I said that looks lovely. You know, you said the reverse Manhattan, and I think I've had experienced that effect later in the evening. <laughs> well, well, you know, sometimes you have, uh, you're late in the evening and, uh, you know, you want to, uh, you know, be with friends and, uh, you know, uh, lengthen that evening, but also, uh, you know, remain coherent. Um, now, next uh, next up uh, for dinner, um, I have, I, I, I'm a bit more of a wine guy than a, than a cocktail guy, if, if, if I'm honest. Um, so what does everybody want in wine? They want good value. They want a Friday night wine for a Tuesday night price. So, so I have some recommendations here, starting with um, Alange Nebbiolo. Uh, this one comes from Cantina del Pino. This is a fabulous producer. This is a lot less than a Barbaresco and Barolo, and you can find this uh, in Seattle, with apologies for, for those of you who are not local here, but you can find this uh -huh. at Esquin if you live. Yeah. Um, what is a great French wine? Well, Chateauneuf du Pop. But yeah. Uh, right across the road, you might have, uh, you might be able to get a Cote de Rhone, and this is an excellent Cote de Rhone uh, village from Domaine Tav uh, that you can get from the Portland Corkscrew uh, wine merchant. Uh, if you're going to San Juan Island, this is a fantastic rosé that I highly, highly recommend, and I encourage you, um, if you can, to visit San Juan Island. And I'm, I'm you know, and they they need for us. Uh, to uh, uh, you know our business. What was um, the uh, what was the winery on that one? Uh, it's simply San Juan, San Juan San Vineyard, Juan. San Juan Vineyard. Uh, now the grapes do come from Walla Walla. They do have some uh, estate 
Uh, they do have a couple of estate wines, Madeleine, Angevin, and Zigariba. Those are really, you know, grapes, obscure grapes. They grow, uh, they grow in Western Washington. Um, now, the pièce de la résistance, mm. and here is the Casey and Jessica secret handshake, secret wine that you are going to remember. Oh my! <laughs> All right, you ready? Yes. Here it is. Huh. Here it is. Now, what this is is it's a private label wine from Rasa Vineyards, Bilo Navarin in Walla Walla. It is purposely without label because what they do is they sell this in bulk. This, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is a $40 bottle of wine that if you can get some, some friends together and pool and buy three cases, you can buy this $40 wine for $16 and Wow. Put your own label on it. That's what I'm going to do. This is a Van de Maison. This is the Noonan Van de Maison. So Jessica very kindly was, was saying very nice things about my wife's uh, paintings. We're going to take a picture of that painting. We're going to print it. We're going to put a little Van de Maison, you know, Dayton Avenue, Cuvée, whatever it is. And we're going to put our own label on it. It's a $40 bottle of wine for $16. That's oh. fantastic. So, uh, so if you want to know more about that, um, you know, send me an email. You, you, can, you can reach me through Casey, uh, uh, and I would be happy to share this incredibly valuable secret. Bilo Navarin is on the Mount Rushmore of Great Washington winemakers wow. um, in Rasa Vineyards. And so I Rushmore. highly recommend that. Yes, the Mount Rushmore of <laughs> Washington winemakers. Right. Why not? Why not? <laughs> That's great. You know, Jesse, I was just thinking earlier today, I want a Friday night wine at a Tuesday night price. Well, <laughs> I, remember? I came up with that when, when I was a poor college student. I would go into a wine shop and I would say, all right, where's your Saturday, Friday night wine? And, you know, give me the two. Or what are you what are you guys drinking in the back room and laughing about how 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 inexpensive it is? and uh and how you're gonna buy a case of that and not let anybody know and then occasionally if they like me they yeah. would tell me that's one of those wines wow well you know when you were holding up that that uh bottle without the label i was thinking oh boy it's gonna be md 2020. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway that that is what i have for you and um Thank you. Uh, it's uh, it's always great to, to, to see you play, and uh, it's an honor to be asked to uh, participate uh, well, in this cocktail hour. So thank you. Thank you for bringing your home into our home. You know, we really appreciate it. And wow, you've acquitted yourself nobly. Um, we definitely would like to have you back again because that was just a full complement of, uh, that was practically a menu. It was lovely. <laughs> Well, yeah, I didn't, yeah and, Casey, and you've got a fair number of Kira cocktails to drink now. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, fortunately, I, uh, my, my children are all of age. Uh, so I, um, I, you know, I, we can, you know, we're, we're, I'm going to take them inside and, and I'm going to share. Yeah. Be careful going back in the house so you don't step on any of them. <laughs> um, well, la ladies and gentlemen, uh, how about a nice little round of applause for yeah. our celebrity bartender, Jesse? Nicely done, sir. And uh, I know this is going over big. I'm looking at the comments, and everybody's getting very thirsty out there. Um, and at this point, uh, we would like to introduce you to our good friends, Travis and Taylor, who are going to be demonstrating their dancing talents. There they are, ladies and gentlemen. And um, that is uh, Travis. Uh, wearing the beautiful tie, and uh, Taylor is, is sitting next to Travis wearing the beautiful little sweater top um, with a diagonal cut. Nashville, Nashville. You know, you can't do anything straight. What do you call it? Uh, I don't know, but it's shiny. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, uh, let's, uh, let's see you shake a leg. I I believe they're going to be dancing to one of the tunes off of our uh, orchestra CD, uh, the Roy Croft Session. Is that right? Yeah. Here we go.
let's hear it for couple number one. Woo! Woo! That was fantastic. Thank you guys. That's Taylor and Travis, Travis Woo! and Taylor. So guys, um, uh, were you doing a combination of uh, Balboa and Lindy Hop or was that all Balboa? That was Balboa and Lindy Hop. We uh, oh. dusted okay. them. Dust off our dance shoes, and we decided to throw them both out. We rolled up the rug, literally. Literally. Yeah, and and I really uh, enjoy uh, watching you know the improvisation that you guys do with your dancing. You know, it's so much fun. The way you, you know you've learned all these different steps, and and the way you're able to juggle them, you know, and make it go with the music. I, I just find that really enjoyable. And, and you guys are a lot of fun to watch too, because. Uh, you, you've yeah. definitely got all the smooth moves and everything. It's well, really fun. It's so easy when we have music to dance to. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, Travis and Taylor, you guys. And uh, that song was called I Never Knew. And it was a mashup of two recordings. Um, there was a 1933 record by Benny Carter. And... Um, that's where that last riff came from, right? That little musical figure at the end of it. That was from the 1933 record. And then just before that, there was this uh, passage that the uh, saxophones played. And that was a solo that Lester Young played in 1940 on a uh, rehearsal recording that he made with Benny Goodman. And um, Benny Goodman was thinking about getting an eight-piece band together and cherry picking some of the best people out of Count Basie's band. And um, they had this recording session with himself and Basie and, and all of Basie's rhythm section, plus Charlie Christian on electric guitar, Lester Young and Buck Clayton on trumpet. And it was such a fantastic group of people. But I think that they kind of left Benny in the dust, you know, mm -hmm. and like that solo was one of the an incredible example of that. and. It was really fun to, you know, incorporate that into the orchestra recording. And you guys did a, a lovely job of interpreting that music. Thank you for that. Appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> I want to move on now. And uh, it's time for our fabulous game show, Tacoma Squares. And uh, Tacoma Squares is a kind of a, it's a quiz show. And it's a, a multiple choice. So you don't actually have to know the um, answer, but you can uh, make make your best guess, and um, and we've got we've got the questions coming up here shortly, and then we've got some fabulous prizes. So um, our uh, on air audience can also um, make a guess at uh, at these questions, or uh, anybody who's uh, watching the show can uh, make a guess on the uh, comments. And then whoever whoever wins uh, will be eligible for some fabulous prizes. We've got some uh, CDs of I've got some CDs uh, that are filling up our basement right now that we would like. Ah, oh, there they are. That we, we would like to uh, give to you. And um, we've also got um, Jessica wasn't kidding when she said we had uh, a bunch of old band T-shirts. And the good news is they're brand new. They haven't been worn before. And these t-shirts are so old, they were actually made in the United States. So it gives you an idea. There's one right there. Oh, look at that. Thank you, Jen. And uh, they were what, 45? I United love States mine. Point, right? Look how cool this is. Yeah, there you go. That that shirt is from probably about 1988 or 89. It, it actually says on it, even. It says, where is it? Uh, Greenboro 89. Wow, there we are. <laughs> so um, that was the name of the guy who uh, did the uh, silk screening, I think. Anyway, yeah, so so um, <laughs> let's uh, get to our first question. Thank you very much for that. You're saving me there with that uh, picture. Thank you. Okay, what's our first question? Oh, okay. Which instrument does Ben Hunter not play? A, banjo, B, clarinet, C, fiddle, D, mandolin. Which one does he not play? Do we have an answer? 
clarinet. 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 That's correct. Clarinet. That's correct. Who did did you say that, Vicky? Yeah, yeah. Vicky wins. <laughs> well, uh, we can talk to you after the show. I, I really want to play the clarinet, though. Like, I really wish I could. <laughs> well, you know, maybe the next time that you're on the show, you'll be able to demonstrate some clarinet playing for us. Well, you gave me an accordion, and I'm still practicing that. Uh huh. Just that in case, orange? just in case that question comes up. That orange, that orange accordion. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. orange. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually a kind of a fun instrument I'm super I, fun uh, you know I, I I played a few songs you know in a kind of a Zydeco style back in the 90s and then when I moved to Seattle I met uh, this uh, fantastic accordion player named Nova Devaney yeah and uh, yeah. once I met Nova I said okay yeah. well, I don't need to play that instrument anymore yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so I really just want to hold it it's it's not even about playing it I just want to carry it on me yeah yeah, it's, uh, it's a great with with some matching shoes or something. You know? Exactly. <laughs> I know. I I just passed up a pair of uh, orange uh, shoes on eBay, and I'm thinking about going back. And yeah, yeah. Go back. There. In fact, you should you should go do that right now. Nah. <laughs> we need we need uh, we need our second question here. What's what's the second question? Okay. What was the cocktail Blood and Sand named after? Oh wow. Was it a a movie? D. B, a book, C, D. a card game, or D, a military maneuver? D, 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 D. Huh? D. D. C. D, C. I'm sorry, D. that answer B. is not correct. B, book? No. The answer D. is A, a movie. A movie? And the movie was called Blood and Sand, and it was a silent huh. movie from about 1921, starring Rudolph Valentino. <laughs> and uh, when that movie was over, all of the uh, fake palm trees were bought up by the Ambassador Hotel in Los Angeles and put into the nightclub, which became the Coconut Grove. And, and so when you look at the pictures of the Coconut Grove and you see those palm trees, they were originally uh, props in that movie. And, and so they decided, let's have a drink called Blood and Sand, since we um, you know, have been using some of the props from the from the movie, and uh, that's where that drink came from. What, what's the what? What's what? What are the contents of the drink? Um, it's a sweet drink, and um, I'm trying to remember now if it's got whiskey in it uh, or um, whiskey, but it's. Um, Scott, I got gotcha. Scott vermouth, cherry liqueur, uh, orange juice, garnished with an orange peel. Yeah, yeah, the cherry liqueur that's very sweet. Can we whip one of those up right now? Can we? Can we see what that looks like? Um, I'm, I'm afraid I, I can't do that right now. I'm, I'm busy with the show, but... Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they're very tasty. I've, I've had a couple of them here and there throughout my checkered past. Uh, let's see, what's our next question? Okay. Uh, which song was not made famous by Louis Armstrong? A, Body and Soul, no. B, Walking My Baby Back Home, C, Eyes of Muggin, D, Do You Know What It Means to Miss New Orleans, which was not C. correct. I, ding, 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 ding. Stuff, <laughs> Stuff Smith. That's right. That's right. I had a feeling you were going to get that one. Ben, can you turn, yeah, turn that echo. Yeah, thank you. Echo, yeah. I heard, I heard. That's right, I heard. so. Um, one of the cool things about Louis Armstrong, in addition to his great personality and his fantastic trumpet playing, his general musicality, and the fact that he single-handedly had a lot to do with inventing swing, just by the way he played, he started recording pop tunes in the late 20s, and his recordings became so popular among musicians that people, um, they... People were covering them, and a lot of these songs became standards, like Body and Soul, he made a great recording of, um, I Cover the Waterfront, uh, Dinah, um, there's just uh, Walking My Baby Back Home, and then later on, Nat King Cole made a great recording of Walking My Baby Back Home. So a lot of these songs were originally um, 
uh, recorded by uh, Armstrong, and uh, then uh, they just took off, and everybody liked them so much that everybody started playing them, and they became standards. So that's kind of what that little question was all about. Do we have any other questions? That's it. Four questions. Yeah, and um, and we'll we'll talk to you after the the show, Ben, and you can uh, pick out a a gift for yourself from our from our reservoir of accoutrement. Oh, by a the clarinet, way, perhaps. A clarinet. clarinet. <laughs> Got a couple laying around here. <laughs> uh, at the bottom of the screen, uh, you people out in internet land will see that we have our receptacle of gratitude, uh, either PayPal or Venmo. So don't be shy, step up and uh, help support live music. Uh, and uh, we're very grateful for that. Um, do we have any other ones? Any other? No, that's it. Oh, that's it. We've reached the end of our quiz. Tacoma Squares, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to have to get a theme for that. All right. Yeah. So, um, you know, uh, I think now it's time once again to hear from our musical guest, Ben. And uh, I'd love for, for you to do another song or two if you, if you feel so inclined. All right. Pick any of the instruments you play. I'll I'll pull this back off the shelf uh, okay. for for a song. Um, I'll play a, a, another 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 style of fiddle tune um, from the great Arthur Smith. He wrote a lot of some really cool ragtime tunes. The only reason I'm doing this is because I I don't want to take it off, but it doesn't matter. Um, uh, he wrote a couple, uh, uh, some, some really great, um, ragtime tunes and, uh, and, uh, two of my favorites are, um, Florida Blues and, and the Peacock Rag. So, uh, we're going to do, uh, we're going to do Florida Blues here. Wow. Oh, let me turn off the, turn off the echo here. Smith. Arthur Smith. Okay. This next tune I'm going to do, uh, is a tune by, um, uh, I mean, I guess, I guess, I guess he's an obscure guitarist. 
Um, I mean, in 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 the, in the realm of, of blues guitarists, but um, great voice and uh, did some great numbers. This is a tune called uh, um, uh, "Don't Put That Thing on Me." Uh, it's kind of like a reference to voodoo. Um, but uh, this is this is Clifford Gibson, and what makes this kind of a, a unique country blues tune. Uh, is that it, it? You know, blues is like a one-four-five kind of thing, right? Um, you know, sometimes it doesn't have the four. Sometimes it's just a one and a five thing. Sometimes it's just a one thing. Um, but this is a one and a and a minor two thing. So it's 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 really it's really it's really weird. <clears throat> Don't put that thing on me Don't put that thing on me I swear I'll be good, kind mama And don't put that thing on me Don't care what you say I don't care what you do You sure can't quit your mama Yeah, she put that thing on you Well, she put that thing on you She puts it on you right You can't when you get hungry, partner, no, you can't sleep at night. No, you can't sleep at night. No, you can't sleep at night. You can't eat when you get hungry, partner, no, you can't sleep at night. She swam, she put that thing on me, and I couldn't keep it hid. No, I couldn't keep it hid. No, I couldn't keep it hid. She said she swam, she put that thing on me. We lost him. He's gone. How tragic. What happened? It was so sudden. The, the voodoo took him. Yeah, it did too. <laughs> it was actually quite dramatic. It was, it, was, it, was, it was all those twos and ones and no five. <laughs> and the, the rapture. Oh, it's such a shame. That was so great. Cool. I was always worried the rapture was going to be like this. One person goes, and the rest of us are all <laughs> still going. stuck here. Oh, no. Now we've lost everybody. That was good, too. I mean, I was getting into that. I oh, was there we are. so excited that someone was going to play that Clifford Gibson tune. I love that tune. I'm, I'm, I'm busy tipping him to see if he's going to come back. 
Yeah. <laughs> chat. We'll see if it works. Jen, quick, play your bass. Oh. Yeah, I could do that. Uh, he disappeared there. Oh. Um, I want to uh, do a little song here, and then uh, I think we're gonna, I think we're going to wrap it up and get a search party to try and find a man. <laughs> yeah. So, can hun, can you put me on the other uh, camera on this this one here? Okay. All right. Well. Um, um, Jessica and I uh, love to head south in the winter time because we're just uh, not able to handle cold weather very well. And you know, her hands turn white, and and uh, uh, you know, it's we're just not equipped to deal with with that season. And we're always thinking of heading to California or Hawaii or someplace where it's nice and warm. And of course, we can't do that right now because of the uh, pandemic and uh, so we, we want I was just thinking about this song and how this kind of ex expresses our little yearning to um, you know to do a little traveling and uh, it's I've never performed this before um, in fact I'm gonna be looking at the words a little bit here but uh, it's a really cute song and there's a great recording by Fats Waller of this tune and it goes like this <laughs> Let's take a boat to Bermuda Let's take a plane to St. Paul Let's take a kayak to Quincy or Nyack Let's get away from it all Let's take a trip and a trailer No need to come back at all Let's take a powder to Boston for chowder Let's get away from it all We'll travel around from town to town, visit every state. And I'm going to say, I love you, sweet, and all the 48. Let's go again to Niagara. This time we'll look at the falls. Yes, let's leave our hut, dear. Get out of our rut, dear. Let's get away from it all. I say, let's take a boat to Bermuda. How about a uh, plane to St. Paul? It's right next to Minneapolis. Let's take a kayak to Quincy or Nyack. Let's get away from it all. Oh, let's take a trip with a trailer. No need to come back at all. Let's take a powder to Boston for chowder. Let's get away from it all. Oh, we'll travel around from town to town. We'll visit every state. And I'll repeat, I love you, sweet, in all the 48. Oh, let's go again to Niagara. This time we'll look at the falls. What? Let's leave our hut, dear. Get out of our rut, dear. Come on, let's get away from it all. Well, let's get away from it all. Woo! All right. <laughs> this time we'll look at the falls, huh? Look at, this time we'll look yeah. at the falls. I think I know what they're talking about. Anyway, uh, so we, we haven't uh, recovered Ben yet, huh? His power went out. Oh, his power went out. Yeah. Oh, oh no. Bummer. Wow. Well, um, we want to thank our uh, musical guest, Ben Hunter, even though unfortunately it, his performance cut off short. But uh, wow, I love that song. What was that? Um, uh, Jen Clifford uh, yeah, it's Hayes? Clifford Gibson in the tune called Gibson. Don't Put That Thing On Me. Yeah. So you've heard that before. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, earlier during the pandemic, I decided to go through this 
meticulously. Uh, and, um, you know, obviously a lot of the people in here I've, uh, I've listened to a lot, but there were plenty of gaps in my knowledge. So we, did, we had a, my parents and some of my friends over Zoom every night, we did a little listening session where we, was, we went through that entire book and listened to everybody. And eventually we ran out of people because this whole thing has gone on for so long. But yeah. Um, but that was the tune that I that I chose as an example of Clifford Gibson. I li listened through his entire recorded repertoire, and I just thought that that one was so neat with that two chord, and it's such a haunting tune and so different from from the other other yeah. stuff that was recorded around that time. Yeah, I love that tune. That was fantastic. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Well, listen, um, uh, we're gonna wrap things up here. And uh, Jess, have you got our little outro thing? Oh, there he is. Hey, Ben. Here. Hey, Ben. I don't. We see you. <laughs> oh, oh, that's oh, that's a photo. No, no. That's oh, that's him. Okay. <laughs> there he is. All right. <laughs> you guys see that meme that was going around about how how Zoom calls are like seances? Ben, are you there? Can you hear us? <laughs> if, if you can hear us, then give us some kind of sign. <laughs> it, it's been so long since I talked to a human being that didn't talk. <laughs> but I'm starting to think that that's just how people are. <laughs> I, I predict a new so true. So true. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, anyway, uh, I want to thank all of our guests once again. And Vicki, it's always lovely to see you. Thank you. And, great show. Um, um, Travis and Taylor, thank you so much for that great dance. Oh, tell me the name of your kitty again. Uh, the one that was on that back. You know, I'm having trouble hearing. We've got a sound. <laughs> I thought it was my connection. Closer to the microphone. That would there we go. That's there, better. There, that's better. <laughs> we just yeah. got a little bit. But um, our, our cats are doing better jazz musicians before that jazz musicians. That's how people we are today. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. And, um, and Walter Harley, thank you for joining us. It's always it is, a pleasure it is to see you. Always an honor. Thank you. You know, you're one of the best drinkers that I know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, speaking of good drinkers, uh, how about it for Jesse? Jesse, nice job today. Well, thank you. You're thank you, well, uh, Walter. Thank you for your uh, your chat messages. They they were great. Uh, you you are a good drinker. You're a good fellow drinker. <laughs> <laughs> love those <laughs> yeah and uh, once again jen thank you so much for being with us uh you can stop by any time oh thank you thanks for having me always a pleasure yeah so um i think we do we have a, a little thing queued up okay well everybody out there uh in uh virtual land uh thank you for watching and uh, listening to the music today and uh, don't forget to stop by and drop something in the virtual pot. And uh, thanks, thanks again. And uh, we'll we'll be uh, doing another one of these. I don't know if we're doing one in January, but we'll definitely have one in February. Oh, oh, next Saturday is our big holiday extravaganza, and hopefully, we'll see some of these same lovely faces at that uh, event on December 12. It'll be at 5 p.m. and um, so uh, that's our holiday spectacular. There's going to be a lot of holiday music and uh, some holiday libations as well. So uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, and uh, we'll, I'll uh, look forward to seeing you during the daytime. I do a little set uh, Monday through Friday around noon to 1230. So uh, thanks. And are we ready for our little? OK. And to all of those of you on the show, Let's hang out for a second after we uh, finish up our little closer here. Here we go. Scotch and soda. Hot 
see the gin. Look at the spell you got me in. Oh my. Do I feel high? Dry martini. Blood in your eyes. Baby, do I feel high? Oh me, oh my. How about a baker's chip? Every time I come, I feel like I'm Do I feel high? Give me loving, baby, I 